In the previous module, we examined Catherine Rimpel's argument in her article on interracial marriage. We devised a strategy that will help us to evaluate her argument. This strategy had four steps. First, we're going to explore the data that was given to us and determine whether there are alternative sources of differences among the incomes of couples of various races and in various interracial marriage combinations. We'll also consider, based on the data provided, whether survey error could be a factor here. We noticed that there were definitely more factors in play than the single factor, race, that Rampal mentioned. We'll look at alternative ways of summarizing the findings that Rampal summarized in her chart to see whether we can't come up with a different visualization that shows a different perspective. Once we've created a different visualization, completed our analysis, we'll place this information in the context of the original argument and evaluate its validity. And finally, we'll look back and consider what additional information we could uncover that would help us to gain a better understanding of the argument. Let's first explore the data. Rempel identified race as being the key factor driving the data shown. And indeed, there's some validity to this. From the brackets here, we can get a sense of the general trend in the spread of the data. The red bracket represents marriages involving at least one Asian. We can see that these landed near the top of the chart. So she's not wrong in saying that Asians do tend to earn more. In comparison, whites had a larger spread, see the blue bracket, and Hispanics and blacks were lower down on the chart. So the general trends she identified are certainly valid. However, to say that race was the causal variable, we need to know more than just that Asians happen to be part of the higher earning groups. For example, if we look at gender, we can see something interesting. Typically, when a female married a member of a different race, we can see that there was a general, in, in general, an increase in her, in the median income of the couple in which she was involved. So a Hispanic female jumping from a Hispanic Hispanic couple to a white Hispanic couple goes from a lower to a higher median income, from about 36,000 to 60,000. The same is true for black females. From a black-black couple to a white-black couple, the median income is higher. So the, diff the data shown may not just be a factor of race, but perhaps the strength of particular earn earners. For example, if we look at Asian females, when they're married to Asian males compared to white males, the earnings are higher for white Asian couples. So perhaps Asian females are particularly s strong earners. Gender could certainly be a factor here, and differences in the strength of earnings from gender to gender could be an issue. However, the data is inconclusive. If we explore the data further, we can see that interracial marriage itself may be a factor in determining incomes. Now, if we look at males and females of each race, we can see that Asian females and interracial couples actually earn more at the median than Asian females and Asian Asian couples. So in one out of one cases, this leads to an interracial coupling leads to an improvement in median income. For white emails, females, this is not so true. In only one case, white female Asian male couples, did the interracial pairing lead to an improvement in median income. However, in literally every other scenario, as you can see from this table, the vast majority of earners earnings were better when a person was a member of an interracial couple than when he or she was a member of a same race couple. For females, overall, 67% of interracial pairings were better than same race pairings, and for males, 100% were. Visualizing this data with a graph presents an interesting picture. It seems that interracial marriage itself might be predictive of a higher median income, that is, that interracial couples earn more. A possible explanation for this information could, of course, be a survey error. Depending on the sample size, the couples, the interracial couples surveyed may represent a very small number of people. Only 15.7% of couples, as we determined from our questions, were interracial. That's a very small percentage of couples. We don't know the sample size, so it's possible that just a couple outliers in each population really threw off the numbers. However, there could be other results driving variables. 
we do see that interracial marriage leads to higher is associated with higher incomes but this doesn't necessarily mean that the marriage itself leads to higher incomes there could be another variable behind the marriage that leads to the higher incomes for example interracial couples may be in general more educated or they may be older or they their location could be a factor for example interracial couples may be concentrated in cities whereas same race couples may be concentrated less in specific high earning geographic areas or may even be concentrated in low earning geographic areas consider the possi consider hispanics hispanics living in the south part of the united states in communities that are largely Hispanic are just more likely to earn less than Hispanics who are living in areas with higher concentrations of whites in the northern United States. So geography could be a factor. Let's create a visualization to summarize what we've learned. Remember that our goal is to transmit insight. The insight that we gained from our analysis was that interracial marriages is itself predictive of higher average income. The next step is to deconstruct the data. We have a visualization already and we want to break it down into raw data. And in order to do so, we've created a table. This table shows the median earnings for males and male and female couples of a variety of different races. The female's race is shown is determined by the row and the male's by the column. So, for example, in the Asian female row and the male Asian column, is the number of the median associated with the median income of an Asian Asian couple. We can see that we don't have a complete data set here. Not all pairings are considered. If we plug this data into Excel, we can then calculate the change, the average change going from a single race couple to an interracial couple. For example, if we look at an Asian 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 couple, a male who's in a relationship with another Asian will have a median income of $62,000. If he's in a, an interracial relationship, his median income will be $72,000, which is a percent change of 16%. For whites, we have more data than for just one race. And because we don't have information on the whole population, we simply take the median of each of the interracial pairings to get an approximate value for the median interracial income. Graphing this data gives us a picture of interracial couple median income benefits by gender. The blue columns here show the male, male benefit and the pink columns show the female benefit. And so this graph generally shows that there is a boost in, for interracial marriage, except in the case of white females. Alternately, we can graph the information by race. Each race is denoted by a different color, and the males and the females are denoted by separate bars. Let's compare these two visualizations. Which one is a better presentation of our findings? If we consider both, they show the same general trend, that there's a boost to interracial marriage. However, the graph on the right give some additional information much more clearly than the graph on the left. One of the issues that we took with Rimpel's argument was that Asians should be, if Asians are truly earning more money in general, and this drove the result, then we would expect Asian-Asian couples to have the highest earnings, and therefore that interracial couplings would have a negative effect. However, they actually have a positive effect in general, and a much higher effect than for white couples. So this not only shows the benefit overall of interracial marriage, but highlights the issue that we can take with Rampel's argument. Now that we have our visualization, let's evaluate the original argument in context. Remember that Rampel's argument was that these numbers reflected that Asians earn more money, period. Our evaluation of this argument is that this is just not the whole story. While Asians did tend to earn more money, there were other issues in play. If race were the sole driver of income, we can say, then one would expect couplings between Asians to be the highest earning. As this graphic demonstrates, interracial marriage is itself predictive of higher average income, a clear indication that there are other variables in play. 
And now that we've evaluated her argument, let's look back. Did we conclude what we wanted to conclude? We hope to evaluate Rimpel's argument, and we overall decided that while it's somewhat correct, it's overly simplistic. Our insight was that race was not the key variable in predicting income. There were other variables for certain. What would be our next step here? We've basically tapped out all of the data that was presented in the argument. But if we go back to the article, we remember that this data was retrieved from a Pew Research report. So if we wanted to uh, uncover some of the income driving variables, whether those are education, perhaps interracial couples were more educated, or met each other in college, or geography, we could start use that as a starting point and investigate what this research report can tell us about the issue. Other secondary sources of research, like the census, might also provide insights. And if we really wanted to do research on our own because the information that we wanted to look for was not available, 